today about the wrath of God. In Romans uh, chapter 2, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them that commit such things. And thinkest this, now this, O man, that judgest them who do such things, and doeth the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath, against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. I want to just repeat that. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. You know, when John was baptizing, we see in Matthew chapter 3, and verse 7, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth fruits, bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Just like to repeat that also, when John was baptizing he said, in verse, uh, chapter 3 and verse 7 of, of Matthew but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism he said unto them O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come bring forth therefore fruit meet for repentance and think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham as our father for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You know, the thing about it is we're sinners in God's sight and we need forgiveness. You know, God is angry with the wicked every day and yet God has made the way of escape through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God says, For the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why we're here. I want you to know there's only one way of salvation, you see, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved are you saved? have you had your sins forgiven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life you know for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Friend, are you saved? Have you got the home in heaven awaiting you? You know, God requires that which is past. We must realize that there is anger. God is angry with the wicked every day. He's full of wrath. That is strong anger. Do you realize that God must punish sin? Otherwise, he wouldn't be God. That's why it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friend, there's only life found in our Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Is it right with your soul? Have you got peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ? You see, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God requires of us. The work has already been done. The Lord Jesus Christ has been crucified. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. 
he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What will you do then with the Lord Jesus Christ? We say again, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God shall not see life, but the wrath or strong anger of God abide upon him. You realize that the wrath of God is like a sword dangling over your head, ready to drop. And if you die without Christ, you go off into a place called hell, where there's suffering, a place of burning and torment. And not only that, but later on to be cast into the lake of fire, the eternal place of burning. And we ask ourselves the question, who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burning? There's coming a time when God will stop speaking to you by his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may stop striving with your heart and convicting you of your sin. Do we realize that we're sinners in God's sight? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you know, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And yet God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and to acknowledgement of the truth which is only found in the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. We say again, he that hath the Son hath life, but he that hath not the Son of God shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. He can be saved. You can have your sins washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. Have you been made right with God? Have you had those sins washed away in the precious blood of Christ? Can you ask yourself that question? Prepared to meet by God. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ.